Hello, my name is Jimena Ramos Salas, and I'm the Director of Research and Policy at Obesity Canada. I'm also a consultant for the European Association for the Study of Obesity. It is my pleasure to be here today and be part of this important awareness campaign. If you're following us on social media, please use the hashtag Living with Obesity so that we can spread the word widely. The Living with Obesity campaign is important to me for several reasons. On a personal level, I have many family members that live with obesity, and I have seen the many challenges they face on a daily basis. On a professional level, I'm a public health researcher working in the area of weight bias and obesity stigma. Today, I wanted to share my story about how I became an advocate for obesity and why I decided to focus my entire professional career on ending weight bias and obesity stigma. I first trained as a nurse assistant in Sweden and as a kinesiologist in Canada, where I learned about the importance of healthy living for prevention of chronic diseases. My academic training took me down the road of promoting healthy lifestyles. And as a kinesiologist, I was trained on the importance of physical activity, specifically for obesity prevention and also uh, for chronic disease prevention. This was in the early 2000s. And after graduating, I started working for the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, which is a national research funding agency. There, I worked for the Institute of Nutrition, Metabolism, and Diabetes, which focused all its strategic research funding in the area of obesity and healthy body weight. Working at CIHR, I traveled around the country and met scientists working in nutrition, physical activity, basic science, clinical research, and public health. I learned very quickly that obesity is a very complex chronic condition. I did my master's in health promotion with Dr. Kim Rain at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada, and there I learned about the factors that influence behaviors at the individual level, and I learned very quickly that the context in which we live matters for individual behaviors. It is not just a matter of educating people about healthy eating and exercise. We also need policies in place to make these behaviors accessible for everyone in an equitable way. And using a health promotion lens, I realized although health is a basic human right, it's really not accessible to all. In 2008, I started working with Obesity Canada, and this experience opened up a whole new reality, the reality of people living with obesity who are stigmatized in our society. In 2009, the Board of Directors of Obesity Canada concluded that weight bias and stigma was a major barrier for improving health equity in people living with obesity. Since then, weight bias and stigma has become our number one priority. And my doctor research, which I wanted to contribute to our work at Obesity Canada, also opened up my eyes to the harsh realities in which my family members who have obesity, as well as my friends and colleagues, uh, have on a daily basis. For four years, I lived along people living with obesity, listening to their stories. Together, we explored how their experiences had influenced how they perceived themselves and how these experiences also influenced their behaviors, health outcomes, and well-being in general. This experience made me confront my own personal biases I had about obesity. I quickly realized that although through my entire academic career uh, and education, I had operated under the lens of obesity being preventable through individual behavior such as diet and exercise. And even when I was using a health promotion, social, ecological, and gender lens, I was still thinking that we need to make policies to change the environment in order to make it easier for people to make the healthy choice. And that healthy choice narrative ultimately puts the responsibility on the individual to choose to eat healthy and to exercise more as a way to prevent obesity. So I have to tell you that this realization hit me like a brick wall. I started to think about my role in contributing towards a narrative that promoted individual responsibility for obesity. And I started to think about my interactions with my nephew who had lived with obesity all his life and who had experienced bullying throughout his childhood and how I had encouraged him to lose weight by eating healthy and exercising more. My doctoral research was transformative in that it was an experience that made me question my understanding of obesity and my behavior and my professional practice in obesity prevention and management. Since then, I have become very outspoken about changing the public health narrative from eat less and live more towards a more person-centered, equitable, and uh, less stigmatizing narrative. I owe this shift in my focus to all the individuals living with obesity who have shared their experiences with me. If they had not opened up to me to show me and to take me down the path of their realities, I would not have been able to change my perspective and approach. This is why I believe this campaign is very important. It is key for us to understand what people are living through in their daily lives in order for us to understand why we need to change our behavior and practices. 
For those living with obesity, this is also important to do. Reflecting on how your understanding of obesity influences your actions and beliefs about yourself. In my research, I learned from many people living with obesity that they felt that obesity was their fault because society, their friends, family, health providers, public health policymakers, the media, they all tell them that obesity can be prevented by eating less and moving more. They told me that they believed this themselves and that since they were not able to manage their weight, this was their fault, that they had simply failed the advice that public health makers were giving them. This led them to continue to try diets and exercise programs, as well as to continue on this endless yo-yo dieting cycle that made them feel ashamed, embarrassed, and disappointed in themselves. They told me that the judgmental looks, the fat jokes, the critical comments from friends, family, healthcare professionals left them feeling alone and isolated, and that they felt that they were not normal and that they did not belong in this world. These experiences of weight bias are like many traumas for people living with obesity, and they can affect the perception they have about themselves as well as their health outcomes. These experiences are not helpful. They believe, uh, research shows that people who experience weight bias and shame for their weight will put on more weight because of the body's response to this stress. I heard stories from people living with obesity that after experiencing weight bias and stigma all their life, they felt that they had nothing left in them to to keep going. My own nephew, who experienced weight bias and weight-based bullying in schools throughout his life, really reached the point where he felt he could not live in this world anymore and that he was not accepted, and he attempted to commit suicide. This personal experience compelled me even more to use my professional voice to eliminate weight bias and stigma and to promote equity for all people. From a public health perspective, our role as health professionals is to do no more harm and to promote health for all. This is why I think it's important for public health professionals and healthcare professionals in general to critically reflect on their understanding of obesity and to question how this understanding influences their professional behavior and practice. In public health, we can also move beyond awareness about the impact of weight bias and obesity stigma by creating policies and laws that prevent weight-based discrimination. And through my research um, at Obesity Canada and through my doctoral research, I developed tools to help public health policymakers use a weight bias lens to assess the consequences or unintended consequences of policies which may indirectly contribute to uh, a weight bias narrative and stigmatizing policies. Through Obesity Canada, we're also engaging with the Human Rights Commission of Canada to help us enforce existing laws and legislations to prevent weight-based discrimination. And through my personal life, I make the effort to challenge weight bias, especially in my family. When I hear fat jokes, for example, I immediately point this out to my son as this being unacceptable. I also explain to him the consequences, the severe consequences these fat jokes can have for people living with obesity. These can be life-threatening consequences. I hope that my story helps you reflect on how you as an individual can do something about eliminating weight bias and stigma in your personal and professional lives. If you're a person living with obesity, or if you have a loved one who's living with obesity, consider how you can change and how you can take action to improve the lives of people living with obesity by eliminating weight bias and obesity stigma. Join the European Coalition for People Living with Obesity and help create this change.